It's so, after doing the hill, after climbing out of that valley earlier and going up there, it's like, oh, it's just so lovely. The breeze is beautiful. Oh, lovely church. I'm wandering around in the graveyard not, not long ago. Asking for peace, ask, asking for help and guidance. With my, not torture, I'm not tortured, but I overthink and I worry about stuff. Uh, and I, I think I'm destined to be a hermit anyway. I think I've been destined to be a hermit all my life. Um, I had to cope, <laughs> get streetwise very quick when I was young. I'm talking about the age of five. Um, my mum had to go out to work. My big sisters were supposed to look after me. Not my big, big sisters. They were all married and gone. But my Jude and Margaret, I never, I can't remember them ever looking after me. And, uh, you know, a bit wild I was in those days. Had my own gang. And, uh, I, like I said, I had this relationship with a tree called, we called it the oak. It wasn't an oak, it was an elm. And I used to love sitting up it for hours. I'd rather sit up the tree than have have to go home and visitors were, were with us. Like, you know, um, family visiting. I hated it. Because they'd always make a fuss of you. Or you'd have to get washed and dressed pretty. And I hated all that, you know. I hid under a bed once, just so I didn't have to go to a christening. <sighs> it was my nephew Stuart's christening and I didn't want to go. I remember that and I hid. And even if they knew where I was, they, let, they just left me. They left me. didn't make me. <sighs> yeah. They didn't make me. <sighs> I think I was sort of shy in some ways, you know. But my hermit life, what I'm saying, why I've come on to this is because I, it's not new to me being alone. I wonder when my mum's coming home, being put in a nursery at two and a half, being looked after by some woman I didn't like. Um, and my mum never being there. Always living on jam sandwiches and that so she come home. We always had good food, by the way, but I used to get up to some mischief, though. I remember fusing the whole house once because my mum had said, oh, I wish we could get that lamp fixed. So I can remember taking this lamp apart and I remember somebody saying to me that there was um, fuses that you had to put in them and they, they were enabled. So... I so I did learn. I knew I had to turn everything off high up. Old fashioned this is all old fashioned electricity, don't forget I'm talking about. I don't know I'm going the right way folks, but we just follow. Um I remember fusing the whole house and I had to work out before my mum came home how to fix the fuses. I'm talking, I was only about 10 at the time. And I used to like taking things apart. That's why I liked science when I was a kid. I used to, have to take the iron apart and see how it worked. And, uh, and I loved gardening, of course. Loved gardening. I was good at it. People, old men would come by and give me advice. What to do and all that sort of thing. I loved gardening. When I was a kid, I did. Did you? Yeah. Loved it. Do you know, I think I might have gone the wrong way. Do you? Yeah, because the path disappeared. We just follow, we just follow, go, go up there a bit. I think the path's over there, Sheila. I think it was very muddy. You've just diverted without knowing. Yeah, I used to love gardening. We used to grow all our own stuff. <sighs> yeah, everything. That was childhood. Childhood was quite good in many ways. We didn't have any money or anything. 
I used to have to stay with big sisters for holidays. And they were bossy, I remember that. They used to let me cut the grass with a lawnmower. And I, I used to polish their cars, I loved that. <laughs> and I was the only one who ever cleaned their car. And uh, but it's my, I loved my sister's food. I was plenty of food. I was always hungry. And, um, and she made nice cakes. So I used to stay with them quite a bit and they would take me out on day trips. And John was a keen gardener. That's my brother-in-law and he used to give me help with my garden, tidbits and that. I think the path's down there. Or we just stay up here for a bit. Stay up here, Sheila. We're just doing a slightly different route. It's only slightly. The path's down there, but it, I remember it being muddy because you get a lot of bikers along here. We'll get back on it in a minute. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. Why I'm going on about this is because I'm talking about the hermit life. Go up there. And, uh, that's it, go up here. I'm ad libbing actually while I'm doing this walk, by the way. <laughs> the real path's further down. So, when I was in the church, I was saying for help, for help to help me uh, sort my brain out and and things like that, you know. Because it does sometimes wonder why I haven't got anybody. Um, I turn people away, don't forget. People say, Sheila, you don't let anyone in. It's true. And if I let anyone in, because I trust them, and then they let, they, let, they let me down, it just ruins it all again. And uh, that's what happens. I close up again. But so they've just said in the church, they said, take it easy. Don't overthink. Stay calm, Sheila. Something might happen, you never know. Or if it doesn't, at least you're calm. <laughs> oh dear. Looking for that soulmate, I think. That person who actually cares about me. Because I haven't had my mum, don't forget, since 14. My sisters haven't really looked after me. Not really. They... They didn't want the burden of a 14-year-old. They tried, but they had their own issues. And I, w I was a free spirit. My mum had let me be a free spirit, see? I had to go and live with a family with rules. It was like, oh, <laughs> That's why I'm a rebel. My mum told me I was a free person. And, uh... I had to keep fighting for equality, which is what I've done. I've stood up for myself. I've gone through the system. I've got an education. I got married. I did all the things society wanted me to do. And so did my ex. He was following the rules, which his father had laid down, which was Macy. He wasn't as misogynistic, I don't think, as his dad, but... Um, I, I think I helped him really because I he realized I was a socialist and he was very much the other way and a racist because um, I was gonna have a steel band at my wedding I, I, when I was a student I knew the um, the band in Reading and um, Hurricane Force they were called they were gonna do my wedding reception and him and his cricket friends decided it wasn't a good idea. So in the end, we just had this crappy disco. So that's the sort of thing. And then if it, if trying to repress me was hard. He couldn't do it. He tried. And um, we destroyed. We could have destroyed each other, really. We, I got out to get out get out of it so um and he had to get out of it we both got out of it <laughs> we were 
conforming to society. The house, the car, the jobs, the money. I tell you, when it all ended, I felt really free. I didn't have much. I haven't now. What I've got is this. I'm out here with this. This is my freedom. This is my equality here. Yeah. Even though that most of that land is owned by the rich people, this is ours. This wild bit. That's why I've always loved the Quantox. Not the Quantox, the Mendips. I'm on the Mendips. Mendips and the Quantox are very suit me, yeah. Suit me well. Very, very. Just have to put another battery in. I just had a piece of cheese. I've had a banana. Um, I've got a piece of cake in a minute. I'm having a great time. It's just starting to get a bit nippy. So I'm going to put my scarf on. I'm just going to put my scarf on. Scarf on. There's no one about. Sit quiet. Axbridge over there. Glastonbury over there. I'm going to zoom in in a minute to see if you can, if we can see Glastonbury. It's been a great walk. One of the good ones. It's only quarter past two as well. We were not even going to be home late. I'm not rushing. I've done really well that extra hour in bed, which I didn't do because I got up early. Right, straight ahead of me, I'll try and see if we can home in on a Glastonbury tour, which is better than it was earlier. And it's over there somewhere. But, like I said, I can't see a blood. All I can see is my. All I can see is my reflection. It's awful. It really is terrible um, trying to see anything with this camera. But still, so, never mind, we tried. We might, something might come out. There's Axbridge over there. And here's my bath, everyone. I could do with one like this, this size. <laughs> no cows out at the moment. The cows do come out here, of course. And of course I've walked all the way down the back of that before now, right the way. I've been everywhere. Everywhere. I've cycled all over the levels. All past there. Done it all. This is my Somerset, everybody. And um, I've just had a piece of cheese. No hills to do, by the way, now. No hills. We're just following the track and we're going to go back. We've got to go back a little way that we did this morning, past the farm, Hill Farm, because um, I had to park in a different place. Otherwise, we would have gone down through Kingswood over there. But uh, it's just starting to get nippy. I think we planned it just right because uh, for two o'clock-ish, it is starting to get nippy now. Don't forget the clocks have gone back. 
So, there's less time. Let's just take a picture here. I'm hoping all these pictures will be alright. Peak is now out of view. Compton Bishop out of view. We've got over there. I I can see with the naked eye just the edge of Cheddar Gorge. It's the edge there. Cheddar over there, of course. Cheddar, St Andrew's Church. Um, Suddenly, you get clusters of St Andrew's Church or St Mary's. You get clusters of them, and. Uh, yeah, that's, that's quite a little bit of a nippy breeze there now. We're going over there to pick up the farm. It's not like I said, it's a lovely walk. Um, coming back this way is, is so much easier, you know. We did the steep climb in the beginning because it was, it was a steep climb as well up to the trig point, by the way. But it's best to get it out in the morning at the start of your walk, when you've got most of your energy, then at the end of the day, you can stroll. And um, I can see some people down there. You can stroll here. There must be a path there. There must be a path down there. I've seen people walking through the trees. Yeah, there must be a path weaving down that way. I've got a feeling there is a pub. Is there a pub down there? Yeah, the village of Cross is down there and I think you can walk up through. That's the village of Cross down there. That's right. I've just seen some people weaving in and out of. There must be a path, which I haven't done. I haven't done everything, don't forget. And ahead of us there, I'll just zoom in, it should show a bit, is the hill farm. Hill farm, Wavery Down, up the top and over the top there is the trick point that we went to this morning. And all we've got now is a lovely, lovely, quiet, gentle walk. No hill on the way back. You're not going to be push to your limits. It's a nice way around. You've got the views of the levels. Patchwork quilt fields. No cows now. They've all been taken in. Um, people have emerged from these trees in a minute because there's a path. That's what's handy when you go out. If you could do a different direction, you can sometimes learn different routes from others. You can see them. And... Uh, I've just picked that up and there's two people right down in a the field there making their way across a field and it could be that they're going to. They might have come across, some people might have gone down there for dinner at the Cross pub and they thought, and they, and they might live in Winscombe and they just walk back home. Nice leisurely walk. And they might be lovers or old lovers holding hands, engaging with nature and, and everything. I mean, I share my videos and I know that I have got quite a few people who enjoy them. So it's not been, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually sharing this experience with others. And I call it Living Tree. I would call it Living, why do I call it Living Tree? Because I am alive, I am, will be an ancestor one day, and I'm leaving stuff behind. What I would have done to have heard my ancestors, gone on a walk with them, you know, it's just things like that. I mean, we don't know if all technology will blow up or anything, we don't know. So, uh, word of mouth might have to be the future, yep, yeah, might be, might not. Whether they've, I think they have sent stuff up in space, but only the chosen few will get, you know, probably the Beatles are up there, um, Shakespeare, you know, the rest of us 
We're just history, aren't we, really? Vaporised if it comes to that. All right, well, let's not end the walk like that, Sheila. Let's be end on a good note, shall we? Beautiful day. The sun is warming you up. I've just seen three people emerge, and they might be going down past the farm. So I'm giving them a head start. But I have walked all along the back of that. That's got a name. I can't remember it. And obviously now there's a path somewhere there lead you down. Probably you might have to pass some fields. It'll be like I've just seen those two people I saw a minute ago crossing the field. They've just emerged now. So it could be that you get in down there somewhere. I've just seen them emerge. Just down in a corner there. But I've got this lovely walk back here, folks. Lovely trees. Um, just beautiful, isn't it? Oh, look at that scene. Let me take a picture. I'm going to turn off for a minute.